Steve Jobs put it very well. What did Jobs say? Lizzie, can you confirm that you the audio is coming through? Yes. Okay, it is. Yeah. Okay. So we're going. Steve Jobs put it very well. What did Jobs say? He said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust the dots will somehow connect in the future. That means you're always going to be walking into the dark. You're going to be walking into a place you've never been. Now you can take that as a scary thing that you're foolish doing because you're always going to be a little scared. Or you can see this as a magnificent opportunity every day. Every day is a new venture. This where I am. I know how I got here. This is where I want to go. The moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. You fuse with the idea. That's what happens. The moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. This union results in the activation and projection of its plots, plans, conditions, and circumstances. Just whoo, like that, everything changes. That new state of conscious awareness becomes your home from which you view the world. If you're observant, you're going to see outer reality shaping itself upon the model of your imagination. No, this is all our imagination at work. All kinds of strange things happen when you buy into it. But you've got to buy into it. Now, you see, when you do, this is the way it works. You can't see what has to happen. You've got to trust. You've got to act like the person you've got to become. Now, you've also got to know that some of the people close to you are saying, who are you trying to act as? What would you, you kidding yourself? Come on, quit acting phony. People are laughing at you. Why are you doing that? You've got to be strong enough to say, too bad. You don't really know who I am. I'm learning who I am. You just watch me get. But not many people can do that. This is not easy. Why do you think there's only three people out of a hundred that do it? But when you do, the way just suddenly happens. And before you know what the hell you're there. You think, wow, wow. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. Then you may jump and you say, I'm going to go there. Well, you got to understand, there's a place too. You go there. There's a place too. These are all real places. That's real. We're visiting it for the first time, maybe, that anybody ever went there. You may have never done it before. You may come in here flat broke, no understanding of this. You can do it. You can do it every bit as well as I can. No, no, you and I can do this. The way just suddenly happens. Yes. yes. And it was about this 3,000 steps. Now, if I and you, Lizzie, being here, should know in advance the 3,000 steps that will bring us here. We understand it's like, this is impossible. We can't know it, okay? But what happens, we take one step at a time and then suddenly we get ideas. We, we hear something or we see something and we see the second, the next step and then the next step again and the next step. Yes. And suddenly when we look back, what do we see? Wow. I've done so many steps and wow, I got here. After several hundreds, you'll be very confident about this. You'll know that you're going in that direction. Yeah, but it will take some actions first and then you'll feel it. It's in your life, like really. You'll start feeling it more and more and more. And this was related to what we talked 
uh, recently that, oh, it's, it's not that easy to fill it at the beginning, but it's coming. More steps we're doing, more we're filling it. It's, it's real. Yes. And now we'll get into our decision and action part. This is amazing, like really, really amazing. Now, what happens, Lizzie? Maybe we were very uh, lucky. And Lizzie, I will, I will ask you kindly to just to look at the microphone because they're coming a little bit from noses. Thank you, thank you. Yes. So if we were very lucky, yeah. then we've learned the process to take, to make decisions in, in a wonderful way. But sometimes we are not that lucky. Our parents weren't that good at taking and making decisions. And we didn't really learn the process. Now, the interesting thing is people who are extremely successful, they are, let me see here, yes. They are taking decisions in seconds. Okay, and they are taking the right decisions in seconds. And they're not changing those decisions. So now we are learning this process, how to take decisions in seconds, the right decision. And we will not need to go and talk to the neighbor, to mom and dad and everybody else around us. We'll just know that is the decision, okay? Does it sound exciting? Yeah, one that we will we'll become experts and no more headaches, no more confusion, what, how to do it, and so on. So we're learning. Decisions, it's kind of always about a choice. And it can be a, de a decision or a choice to take a decision or not to take a decision. Or it can be a choice like to do this or that, or a choice to act, not to act choice. I want to buy the yellow bag. I want to buy the, the, the green bag or the red bag. So decision is kind of about choices. Sometimes we can also have an open decision, like we need to act somehow, but we have no solution in our head. And we'll be talking also about that, how to see the solution, how to get it. Okay. Now, the first step in all this decision process is the goal. Unfortunately, Lizzie, you already have the goal. You did this, you have a crystal clear goal. And we mentioned that our life is kind of a boat or a ship, sailing, sailing. If this ship doesn't have a direction, a captain, a team, an anchor, this ship just will, yeah, float a little bit and then it'll go broken in different on, on different rocks and different rocks but if we do have a destination then what will happen is this ship will be like a ship with a captain and with a destination and this ship will get to australia if it is the goal so every person needs to have their life purpose, goal, dream, and so on. Without it, we are simply dying. And this is not exaggeration. Without a goal and a dream, we are feeling not enthusiastic. Our heart beats differently. Our body moves differently. We feel tired all of the time. This is because there is no this oh, want to achieve. Yeah, and we become slaves of our daily trivia. So daily activities as washing up and vacuum cleaning becomes our boss, our goal of the day. And the life just goes like that slowly until we die. And we don't want to be part of that. We want to have a purpose. We want to have a direction. Now, this is very important in regards to decision-making process. Because next time we have, a we, we need to make a decision and we'll make it like a, a decision for girls. Let's suppose that we want to buy something. We want to buy a yellow or a green bag. Very easy thing. 
Now, the first thing is to ask ourselves deeply inside, what would I love in regards to these pets? And there will always be one of them we like the most. Now, this is the process. The next thing we ask, is this decision, is this bag, the green bag, is it in coherence, in harmony with my life, dream, and goal? If I'm buying the green bag, but it's not in harmony with that person I'm becoming, then it's not the right decision, okay? Because we have this, as we mentioned. So is this decision a decision that this person will have or this one? Very easy, right? And now that we know the goal, we know who we are becoming, then we understand, okay, this decision is in coherence with this person. It's in harmony. It vibrates well with this person. And then, yes, we feel in peace and we feel no confusion. What happens if we listen to something that is called pollution? Because this decision process is polluted by two factors. Okay. We're mostly one factor, actually. It's called fear. Okay. So the decision process is polluted by fear, fear of not having money or fear of not being accepted yeah, or another type of fear. So let's say we're going back to our bag. I see the red bag, the yellow bag, the green bag. I want the green bag because this is what I would I love. But my budget is for the yellow bag. Now, what can I do? I can either not take any decision because I'm thinking like, okay, I don't have the budget for the green. Then I postpone the decision and saying, I'm coming back when I have the budget. Or it can happen that I am deciding, okay, let's go for the yellow that I don't want, but it's a good price. <laughs> then what happens? I'm filling my home with things I don't like, with things I will not be using, with things that are not in harmony with me because of the price. So I, I'm suddenly full of things that are not in harmony with me and not bringing me joy. They are not bringing me in this state that I need to be. And then that I get it. Okay, this yellow bag is not in harmony with me at all. It's only in harmony with my budget. Then I say, okay, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until I get that green, the green bag that I wanted. And this is very simplified, but it works with all decisions. Okay. So if we are letting our pollution disturb our decision, we are getting those uh, confused decisions and we start feeling that we want to change the decision. That's why, Lizzie, successful people, they are making right decisions in seconds and they are dedicated to those decisions. They are not changing them. People that have troubles, they are taking the decisions very slowly. Why is it slowly? Because they are fighting inside. They are taking decisions they don't want to take. So there is fight. They are taking it and then they change it often and fast. So they're taking decisions, they change. Why? Because they're not in harmony with that yellow bag that they bought. So they want to go back to the, now they, they think, oh, I've spent money and I don't like it. And I want to go back to the shop and give it back and so on. What type of life is this? All this pollution, it's actually rooted in our paradigms, money paradigms, beliefs, okay? And every type of paradigm. So now that again, we leave the paradigm control our decision. If we have the budget, we're doing it. If we don't have the budget, we wait until we get it. <laughs> then we make this decision and we'll be completely happy, healthy, and so on, because we'll be in harmony with ourselves, with our goal, life goal, with what we really love and really want. Yes, so what we're going to do is kind of now and forever, like cut this pollution out.
So we have a very easy decision process. What would I love? That's it. And we don't need to go to the neighbor to hear what would I love. The neighbor loves the yellow thing, good from the neighbor. If I like the green one, good for me, right? So now we don't need all these other people to confirm or not to confirm, whatever it is. This is the way we take decisions. Now we're getting into the action part. And it was very important to get a good understanding of the decisions in order to get into action, actions, because actions, we first design something and then we do, we do it. Now, it's kind of very easy to get to this as goal that we are dreaming about. If we're getting through the 3000 steps, right? And it's very easy to get there through actions. And how do we do that? At one point, Bob Proctor was talking to his mentor and we're talking about 1960s. And his mentor was Earl Nightingale. And Earl Nightingale, he was the one that started all this industry of self-development. And Bob asked Earl at, at uh, a dinner or lunch, they were together eating and uh, Bob asked, said, Earl, you, you managed to do so many things. How do you manage time? And Earl Nightingale looked at Bob and said, Bob, I'm not managing time. Nobody can manage time. I have the same amount of time as everybody else has. What I can, I can manage activities. And then Bob heard this, um, suggestion to think in the evening about six activities that he thinks he would like to do the next day and these activities should be activities related to the goal that will bring him nearer to this goal and Earl said this is what he is doing Every evening, he's writing down six things. Next day, he starts doing these six things. And when he is doing one, he's not thinking about activity number two, three, or four. He's just thinking about one, concentrating on one, and doing this activity. Once he did one, he goes to two. And he's not thinking about one anymore. He's not thinking about three. He's just focusing and doing his activity number two. Now about these activities, they don't need to be activities that are taking six hours each and so on. These activities can be call a person, talk to a person, if it is you're building something there, or buy some materials if you need something for your business, sell something. And Earl Nightingale said to Bob as well, I'm writing down six things. If I don't manage to do them all during the day, it's okay, I'll do them tomorrow. So we're not judging ourselves and we're not criticizing ourselves. Oh, what did you do? And so on. Criticizing ourselves, judging ourselves. It's a paradigm that comes from the childhood. Do you remember parents would say us, brush your teeth, brush your teeth, brush your teeth, brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Not washing your not brushing your teeth. You're punished or something like that. You're not getting the candy. You're not getting that. So we got punished if we didn't do the things. And this is a paradigm. It's coming from the childhood. And we don't need to punish ourselves if we didn't do it. We don't need to punish ourselves if the paradigm, the bad paradigm won and we didn't want it to win, but it did work. It's okay. It is as it is. It, that's good. You know, we're taking it tomorrow and we're doing it tomorrow. Now, if you feel you have the ability to do, to write six and do six, it's good. If you feel it's okay, I feel more comfortable with writing down three activities daily and doing three, do three. The important thing that every day we are st we're starting taking steps toward the dream of ours. Right. So every day we are making one action, two, three, six actions, whatever that is bringing us nearer. 
And as mentioned, it can be, it can just take two minutes to talk to a person, to call to somebody, to call an organization or whatever. These ideas are coming to you. And these ideas are coming to you through your intuition. And actually, this was also a part of a uh, decision-making process, the intuition. Because the interesting thing is, when we ask ourselves, what would I love, we'll get answer very often from the intuition. And what is our wonderful intuition? Our intuition is an answer from the subconscious mind, this wonderful subconscious mind. Our mind remembers everything, all the experiences. Our mind analyzes skin color, hormones, uh, pressure in the air outside. And our mind, this wonderful laboratory and our wonderful brain is giving us the results and this at saying, you know what? We need to take an umbrella today. So we have this tendency, we want to take an umbrella. It's because the body feels the pressure in the air, the same like animals do. Dogs can do it, we can do it. So we have this feeling, I need to take an umbrella. But then we say, oh no, it's sunny. Everybody talks it's sunny. We are not taking that umbrella. And then it rains. And then I think I, I should have listened to myself. And the same with the decisions, your decisions, like your intuition is saying, take the green bag. And then we're like, no, 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 no I'm taking the yellow. And then we're listening. We're saying, oh, I knew that it was the green. I knew I had to listen to myself, right? It was the intuition part. And the same with the actions. Suddenly we'll get inspired. So we have the desire to take some actions. Some will be right. Some will not be right. But those that are not right, you know what? They are spaghetti that make us grow, that make us understand that, okay, it wasn't that way. I'll try a different way. And I'm trying a different way again. I'm trying a different way. And we have millions of ideas all the time. In our head, they come millions and millions of ideas. And this is the wonderful thing that we will never get uh, empty with ideas. We'll have enough and we'll be able to act and to make this 3,000 steps that we need. So now uh, we talked a little bit about the decision-making process. We talked about our homeworks. And in these actions, one of the things I would always write disciplines, but disciplines are not considered those actions that, okay, they are, some, of course, influencing the mindset, but the disciplines, there should be other actions as well, not only disciplines. That's what I'm trying to say. We need to act as well in regards to getting to the goal. Okay, to building the business we want, the lessons we want, or whatever we think, or if it is a health goal we have, so the actions would be go and train and uh, buy mangoes and buy the healthy stuff and so on and, and so on. So they are the actions related to the goal directly. Now, I would love us to repeat a little bit all our homeworks. They're just getting <laughs> interesting homeworks and so on. We had uh, the past two weeks, we've been doing that. That's good, homework. That's good or that it is as it is. We had it like that, right? And we had the exercise uh, to make this power life script. And now it will be the, the exercise will be to record it and to listen to it. Yes. Then we had the exercise to be generous all the time. And generosity is the first law of prosperity. And of course, we want to prosper in everything and so on. So generosity is the first law. So we'll be generous with everybody and with our emotions, feeling, time, helping, support and everything. We had the exercise to rebuild realities, past, future, and so on. If there is any experience we dislike, we just rebuild it in our imagination 
the way we would love it to be. This is a very, very powerful exercise, extremely powerful. We had the exercise to be uh, to do the gratitude. Gratitude is extremely powerful exercise. We'll be talking more about it. And uh, it was waking in the morning, writing down 10 things we're grateful for before we fell asleep. Think about our goal and being grateful and writing some things about being grateful. Yes. Then we had a self-confidence uh, formula page. Uh, we can, if you still have the possibility, oh, sorry, it wasn't the self-confidence. Was it self-confidence? It was uh, the suspend disbelief, suspend disbelief we had. Yes. So suspend disbelief, we can still read it. If you have the opportunity, possibility, sometimes just keep it on your table and read it sometimes if you can. Yes. And yes, it was uh, suspend disbelief. And I will send you at one point uh, an article about decision-making process. It'll be nice for you to read it once, at least once, so you get lit, like a little bit deeper uh, this decision-making process. Uh, what happens when we're taking decisions? Something wonderful happens. See here. Now <clears throat> we start making decisions from this point of view. When we take a decision and make an action that is coherent with this thing, regards with this, we are rising our own vibration and frequency in our body. Yes. And we are, when we are rising it and we are here suddenly, then some serendipity, some interesting things start happening. We just, whoops, like a magnet attracted and start happening. Okay, so we are growing the other decision, the decision process. We are becoming different. You'll observe that, listen. Please observe it and let me know next time. If you'll do it during the day, uh, during this week, if you'll take a decision that is kind of big in regards with your uh, goal, then you'll observe the second you took it and you are dedicated to it. You are dedicated and you think, I hold this. I know it's hard. I know it's, it requires this sacrifice. I'm doing it. <clears throat> the second you're doing it, something will happen inside of you. You change the frequency. You are getting there. And something else will happen. Serendipity will happen. Some things will happen. Okay. Suddenly, will you, you'll you get called and you'll get an opportunity somehow where some people will contact you and so on and so on. Yes. These were the things we had for today. <clears throat> Next time, um, I'll get it as well. Amazing. What is that? Was it wonderful? <laughs> Next time, we'll be talking about the, uh, the capabilities of our mind. Okay, this is wonderful. We'll be talking about these capabilities we have focus, memory, perception reasoning factor and so on so we'll be working with them to know what do we actually have what kind of powers we have because it's very powerful each and every of these faculties mental faculties it's very powerful and the interesting thing we don't really train them in universities in university we accumulate information but we don't really train the mental faculties and we'll be working with them next time so it's going to be wonderful Yes, and now I'll be, yes, I'm stopping the recording.